fantastic functions and where to find them. Um, it is great to be at an in-person Laracon again. We had this COVID blues way too much. I gave a lot of talks talking to a screen and it's good to see a lot of uh, faces here. So for those that know, don't know me, I'm Freek. I'm uh, a developer at a company and here's a pronunciation. Spasi. Uh, I'm active on Twitter, like most of you, under the handle Freak Murze. I have a blog, Freak.dev, where I blog about um, Lar Laravel and PHP related things. Together with a buddy, I created Oh Dear, which is an uptime tracker, but this one doesn't only check your homepage, but it will actually crawl your entire site and send you a notification if any of the pages is broken. And together with my colleagues at Spasi, uh, we've created the uh, best Laravel exception tracker called Flare. Now, before I head into my talk itself, I want to give an update on our open source numbers. We currently have about 300 packages registered on Packages. They've been downloaded uh, for yeah, 270 million times and they are being downloaded for 15 million times. And we are really honored uh, that the community likes uh, our work uh, this much. Um, you'll find a big list on our website uh, with all the things uh, that we've created. And like Kaneko already mentioned, there is a special license on them called Postcardware, which means that if one of our packages makes it into your production environment, you are required to send us a postcard. And yeah, we're missing uh, 249 million uh, postcards. Now, every... <laughs> Now, every postcard that we get, we take a picture of, and you can enjoy them too at our virtual postcard wall uh, on our website. Now, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk a little bit about PHP. And now that we're back in an in-person conference, uh, I can do that again. Let's do a show of hands. Who here likes working with PHP? Yeah, fantastic. It's a fantastic language, right? Um, I really love uh, programming in PHP. And some say it is dead, but I think, don't think those people that they paid attention. Uh, it still powers a, a big part of, uh, of the web, and you'll find different blog posts saying like 70% or 80%. Uh, I think it's hard to determine how much, but it's indeed a lot. And I think, yeah, I added this slide uh, two seconds ago. Uh, <laughs> so I had this thought, I like playing music, and I thought PHP is maybe a little bit like Nickelback. Um, <laughs> not, a lot of, I, not a lot of people like it, but probably those people aren't listening to, uh, to Nickelback. If you listen to Nickelback, maybe you like it. And yeah, Nickelback still sell, sells a lot, out a lot of concerts and still sells a lot of CDs. So yeah, it's maybe not popular outside of their fan base, but yeah, PHP, Nickelback, there are certainly some, uh, some same things there. Now, I certainly love uh, working PHP, and I think PHP is in a fantastic position. We have amazing new features that are being added every year. And on this slide, I've added just a few. We have native enums, short closures, uh, some cool operators, property promotion, uh, weak maps, union types. It's, it's pretty much fantastic. And uh, we uh, not only get a lot of new features, but we also have massive um, performance improvements uh, coming from PHP 5 to 7, and then again from 7 to 8. It's really impressive. Now, I think that uh, working PHP isn't uh, only fun because of the language itself, but also because we have a very good dependency manager, which we all know and love, uh, Composer, of course. And this allows you to easily pull in yeah, any third-party code, and we have a massive amount of packages available. Um, I have here a few screenshots that I made from, uh, from Packages. And we currently have about 330,000 packages uh, available. And not only that number is important, but also yeah, the, the curve, it's still growing. So there are still uh, things being made available all of the time. Uh, this is a graph that shows the amount of packages that we all install. And you can see here that monthly we uh, download about um, 1,600 million packages, and we've uh, downloaded in total a whopping 55 billion amount of packages. So it's, uh, it's a great and healthy ecosystem. 
But to keep the ecosystem fresh, we need to not rest on our laurel laurels and think like, yeah, we are it, we are the best. But we need to take, uh, take a look at other ecosystems as well. And we need to yeah, steal or get inspiration from the best bits. And I think for PHP and the ecosystem to remain relevant, we need to find creative ways to improve and to use PHP. And in this talk, I'm going to show you a few fun bits that you might not um, need in your day-to-day -day work, but are still worth, worthwhile to know. Uh, now, my timer is already at uh, 20 minutes, so I can't uh, show this all. So I've made like a shorter list of things uh, that I want to show. So first up, fork. Let's talk a little bit about concurrency in PHP. Probably from your day-to-day -day work, you have PHP scripts that just run from the beginning to end and you build up some kind of response. But of course, other languages, just as uh, JavaScript, they have many async features. So I thought it would be fun to take a look at what is available in the PHP world for concurrency. And we're already spoiled because there are uh, already a few great options. Um, one of them is uh, MPHP, of which you see an uh, example here. You can create a promise, uh, use a parallel map function, and uh, do a, a sleep there, and that happens concurrently. We also have uh, React PHP, which allows you to define a loop, add things there that can uh, be executed on a certain event, and then you can uh, start the loop. And I think this is, this is very powerful, um, but you can see that there is already some code involved to, uh, to make this work. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice to know how it, how it could work under the hood, because I'm going to show you a technique that isn't used in these packages, but another technique. And what is the easiest way to, uh, to get started uh, with this? So let's head to uh, PHP Storm and take a look. So I have here a uh, little artisan uh, command, and I uh, actually have a couple that I can use to demonstrate some of the things. And I'm going to uh, call in my trusty Ray application, where I can just uh, write some debugging stuff too. So this is a very simple script. We, uh, yeah, I was a little bit inspired by the matrix. We have here take the blue pill, and it's true. And if we take the blue pill, uh, then we are going to send a message to Ray, I have taken the blue pill and we're even going to make it blue. And otherwise, I've taken the red pill and behind this you'll see that uh, we've colored that red. So let's try and execute this and see what happens. So take the blue pill is true. So we got that message here in, um, in Ray. Let's see what we can do if we make this false. What happens then? Of course, uh, I hope that you all understand that we now have taken the red pill. Now, I want to uh, let you think for a, a bit. Uh, this is, yeah, like um, the the coolest trick that I that I have in this talk. Uh, it's maybe my <laughs> "How You Remind Me" uh, hit song. Um, is there a way to take both pills and not? Uh, only one pill. Is there a way to execute the if branch and the else branch? Is there a value here that makes that possible? Sorry? Quantum computing, yeah. We're not that far in PHP yet. Maybe in PHP 8.3 or something? Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, now that you've thought about it, let me show you a cool, neat little trick. So this is a special function called process control fork. And let's run this code again now. So oh, I lost my ability to type here in the terminal. Let's try it again. Damn. PHP Storm Team, where are you? <laughs> Wait. Try hitting a tab. New tab. Oh, yeah, that's maybe a good idea. Yeah, I can type here. Thanks. That was a good idea. OK, let's uh, do this again. Let's run this with that function there. And you can see that I've now executed both the if and the else branch. 
Isn't that kind of amazing? <laughs> um, let me let me explain how this uh, how this work how this works. So, process control function is uh, a function in the uh, family of process control functions, and it's available by the by an extension. But this extension is uh, available in almost every PHP distribution. So, probably you can use this function on your system as well. And what happens here is that essentially this process is forked. We are going to execute this twice. And what process controller fork will return is if you are in the main process that called this function, then you are the parent process. And then you get your process ID back, which is a truty value. And if you are the child process, then that function returns zero. And so it's the falsy value. So we are going to execute that other branch. So I hope it will become more clear if I uh, maybe add another raise statement here. And you can see that we have actually are executing it both one time in the parent and one time in the child. So that's the process control uh, fork function. OK, let's build a little bit upon this. Because right now, um, we have a child and a parent, and we're not waiting uh, on each other. And let's now uh, make this a little bit more, uh, more functional by letting the parent wait until the child is complete. Then maybe in another version we can have uh, multiple children that all do a task and a parent that's waiting on the, uh, on the results. So how can you actually wait on a, task, on a, uh, on a child? Let's run uh, through this again. So we are going to call process control fork. We have that process idea. If it is zero, then we are in the child process. In the child process, we are going to uh, start working, and all the child processes are going to be colored green here. Then we're going to sleep for 10 seconds, and then we're going to exit out. So here, we are in the parent process, because here, are, uh, we were not in the child process, because process ID was uh, a truty value. In the parent process, we are going to loop until we are finished. We are going to uh, sleep. And if this yeah, returns is finished, then we actually are finished. Now, how does uh, that is finished look like? Well, we are going to use another process controller function, uh, namely wait on the process uh, ID. And this is uh, an important flag. Uh, in normal circumstances, um, this function will actually wait until the process is, is, uh, is OK. But if you do no hang, then you just get uh, uh, a value back that you can check if it is uh, already finished or not. OK, let's try and execute this. And let's see if we can wait on the child. So the child starts working. Yeah? And now we're sleeping in the parent. So we're here, and we're waiting until the child is, uh, is finished. And yeah, the, the parent, the, pa the child has finished. We slept one more time, and then the parent finishes. So now we can wait on children. Let's take it one uh, step further and try some communication between the parent and the child so that we can actually um, yeah, get, get results back that are calculated in a child. Now, how can you communicate uh, between processes? Um, well. There's also a, uh, a function in PHP for that, or a couple of functions. And those are the socket functions. And sockets, uh, they allow you to communicate between processes. Um, how it works is that you can create a uh, socket pair. And this is one of those old PHP functions where uh, you don't get a result back, but you're actually going to change this variable. This variable will uh, contain two sockets, which we are going to destructure here. And there's one, um, how it works is that you can um, put something in the socket to the parent, and then in the socket to the child, it's, it's coming out. So if we are in the child process, we are immediately going to close the socket to the child, because we are the child. And in the parent process, we are going to uh, close the socket to the parent, because we are the parent. In the child process, we can just write something to uh, the socket to the parent, namely result from child. What we can do then in the uh, parent process, when we're finished, we can read uh, from that socket, and hopefully we are going to get the string back that we, uh, that we got there. So let's try uh, that again. So let's execute fork 
tree here. So the child will uh, start working. Here we are going to again sleeping in the parent and hopefully we get result from child back. And I know that, that we will. And here it is, result from child. So that's, uh, that's how that works. Cool. Okay. Um, so we have gotten a lot of, uh, of functions here. Um, and probably it's not too bad, but you don't want to write this uh, yourself. Uh, there are also a couple of edge cases if you are uh, parsing big results that, um, um, that you don't want to handle yourself. So at SPASI, we uh, created a package that uses uh, these, uh, these functions. And how you can do all of that stuff is just by calling fork, um, uh, getting a new instance, calling run, and just give it a couple of, uh, of closures. And those will all be executed at the same time. If I take a look at the uh, source code of, uh, of fork, then you already see some of these, uh, these functions uh, mentioned and here you can see it's a little bit uh, uh, polished. Here you can see that we use uh, those sockets. So it's just uh, packaging up everything that you uh, that you just saw. Okay, what we are going to do here is we are going to execute all of these functions. We can sleep here, um, and what you are going to see is that all of them will start at the same time and they will be finished uh, after five seconds. So it's not that we're going to execute this, then this then this, no, they will all execute at the same time. So let's try to do that. Fork uh, four, yeah. So we're sleeping for five seconds and now we're already waking up and so we're not waiting on, uh, on each other. So this is like the easiest way to do this. Uh, this is a package that was uh, originally uh, created by my buddy Brent, who is here somewhere in the, in the audience, and I polished it a little bit. Now, when uh, creating uh, this demo, uh, I actually had an idea, a, a very bad idea, don't do this. Um, let's, let's maybe modify this a little bit. Um, and um, I know this one I need, but let's maybe do here this one, and then maybe some random numbers here. Uh, maybe a two, maybe a five, maybe a six, like that. And let's execute this. And now we have the world's shortest sorting function. So now these numbers are coming out sorted. <laughs> it might take some time, but it works. But the implementation is with just one line of code. But don't do that. <laughs> but I thought it was like a, a fun side effect. OK, let's go back to, uh, to the slides. Um, so yeah, concurrency in PHP, it is possible. Uh, there are uh, cool options out there which are uh, probably better if you uh, need more functionality than Fork, has, uh, than Fork has to offer. But if you only need uh, a couple of things, then our Fork package uh, may be uh, something that is worth your time. Okay, second thing. I only have six minutes left, which is like five minutes less than I thought it would be. So we need to go a little bit, uh, little bit more fast. So I've already shown you uh, here my little body um, um, Ray, which I can use to uh, output um, some debugging information. It's like uh, dump and die debugging on steroids. It's something in between DD and, um, and Xdebug. And yeah, like you've seen, I can just use this in, uh, in an application here, the Ray statements. And that works because I've already installed a uh, package that contains the Ray function. And uh, Trust me, installing that package is way more easier than, uh, than xdebug if you're uh, <laughs> heading into troubles. Now, there was one thing that, um, that was really annoying a little bit, uh, is that yeah, I can use Ray everywhere where I use Composer, but I sometimes use uh, this little application, Code Runner, to just run some, some code. You can use this to run code in almost every language. And you can see that Ray isn't available here. This is just a single uh, PHP script. Now, I can make this work. And let me, let me show you how. So it is um, with something that uh, is called uh, global Ray install. 
and then I can install it. It's also a, uh, a package. I'll show you the link in a bit. And I'm going to install this zero like that. Happy debugging. Good. And if I do this now, then you can see that it is working. So now I have a function uh, available where I, in an environment where I don't have Composer. Now, how does that work? How does, does that magic work? How does BHP know where that Ray function is located? Well, it's actually a, a very simple thing. Let me show you. Um, so I'm going to look up my uh, php.ini uh, file, which is located here. Uh, let's go hardcore mode and let's go in VI. Uh, I can't seem to paste. There's something wrong here and I don't want to type this all. Yeah, there it is. Um, let's uh, search for prepend, prepend. Not here, prepend, prepend, not that one. This one is it. So auto prepend file. It's a directory in your php.ini. And what you can do there is you can um, add a script there and the script will be executed before the, the PHP script that you want to execute will be executed. So it's a sort of global include uh, that you can do. And what the global Ray installer does is um, just um, yeah, adding a file there that loads the entire uh, Ray package. So you can do this to yeah, add some functions that you want to work everywhere. Um, now, um, maybe you're thinking, hey, I want to use DD and dump everywhere. Well, you're in luck because in the global uh, Ray loader script, also DD and dump will be loaded. Okay, let's go back to the slides. And I only have three minutes left, so that's, that's not too good. Uh, so yeah, gl global functions, you can define functions that are available anywhere on your system via that any directive. And you can see a uh, example in uh, that um, uh, in that repository. So I wanted to say a few words about PEST, but I'm going to skip that, uh, which is yeah, kind of sad because I had like a good example for you, but let's skip over uh, testing and all of this and the demo and just tell you that Luke will tell you more after <laughs> this talk. So I'm, I'm a little bit in luck there. So Luke, you, you have this, right? Good. So. The PHP ecosystem. I think it's a fantastic language, but we need to keep an open mind to um, yeah, uh, keep it a healthy way. And I think a good way to do this is by looking at other systems, uh, like uh, we've did now with async. We, uh, we were a little bit inspired by JavaScript. Uh, for PEST is inspired also by JavaScript, by a test runner named uh, Jest. And we need to take the best parts of that and, uh, and repeat that. Um, there's one more thing that uh, I want to show you, and that is something that Christophe also showed you in his talk. Christophe and I uh, worked very hard on a new course on readable PHP, which I think is very much worth uh, your attention. So that is uh, all I have for you. Uh, I thank you for your attention and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. <laughs> I got a question. <laughs> no surprises there. So I got a question from Kaneko. <laughs> What's your future, future plans for Ray? Um, yeah, I can't tell too much uh, about that, but um, we already uh, shipped like a big uh, 2.0 update recently where we have like uh, yeah, multi-window support. We also uh, added uh, server support a while ago. And I think where, where we're going to concentrate on next is making it available for other ecosystems as well, making that more available. Uh, we already have like a plugin for WordPress. It might, we might do some for other ecosystems uh, as well. And of course, we'll also, uh, we're already doing that. We're following uh, Laravel uh, very closely. If you see like a feature that could be good to integrate in some way into Ray, uh, we, uh, we do that fairly uh, immediately. Because um, personally, and, and some other people at Spass, yeah, we use this daily. So yeah, we're constantly polishing it a little bit. There's no big battle plan, but just small steps to improve and improve it. <laughs> Thank you. 
And from an anonymous person. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have to say for the all those people that didn't send you a postcard? I mean you. Send one now, today. <laughs> I I want it. it. It would be totally awesome if I get back to the office tomorrow or later this week that there would be like 50 or 100 postcards. So if you want to make me happy, do that. <laughs> so that's Freik. Thank you so much. Thanks.